Jason Stark is here, puts an awful lot of work into this and stuff is up on The Athletic now and you go back into the archives to see all the great stuff that he's written. But you have your ballot, Jason. You actually have a ballot. You write it out and you go 10 deep. Give it to us. Right. I haven't always gone 10 deep, but I did it again this year because I thought the first year class was exceptionally deep. Um, I mean, you can see that I went Beltre and Maurer, but also Utley and David Wright, who I've said I specifically voted for, to try to keep him on the ballot yes. so we can right. keep him in this conversation. Uh, the one big change from the past, because I try to be consistent every year, is first time I've ever voted for Andrew Jones and uh, <laughs> I heard Joel talk about how he agonized over Gary Sheffield. That was me with Andrew Jones for a week mm. trying to decide what I was going to do with him. And I, look, my thing is, I, I try to be logical about this. If I'm going to vote for players with big peaks and who had big impact on winning, how could I vote for Utley? How could I vote for Wright and not vote for Andrew Jones? That eventually swayed me. Andrew Jones had a 10-year peak of being a six-win player with his outrageous defense. Yeah. I'm also big on defense, right? So let's get away from RBIs for a little bit and see, like, hey, there's an all-around game, a nuanced game. Um, I, I'm not saying he's not on the border, and I, I, I'm also not completely sold, I think, like a lot of people, that he's the greatest defensive center fielder in the history of the game. But you yeah. don't have to be there to think this was a great player for 10 years. Yeah, you know, I've said many times that the young Andrew Jones was the greatest defensive center fielder I've ever seen. You know, like you're, when a ball leaves the bat, your brain says double. And then Andrew Jones would kind of lope into the pitcher. And it wasn't a double anymore. It wasn't out. And that was something to see. Um, you know, I, I've had questions about how well he aged. Uh, that's a problem. His batting average would be the lowest of any Hall of Fame outfielder. And as you know, Brian, he dropped off dramatically in yeah. his 30s. Uh, he'd have the fewest wins above replacement of any outfielder in his 30s. But 10 great years starting at age 19, it's just impossible to deny. Yeah, look, what, what you do in your 20s is, you know, as a ball player, that's that's it, essentially it. it. Like, it. So what did he do in his Well, how was, how was his 20s? The other part of this, and you and I were discussing this, I try to make this point that even, at, like, when I go to the Sabre Analytics Conference, right, I try to say the data is an abstraction of the physical world. It's not a direct replication. So the data does reflect what is happening on the field, but there are some things that will be just on the fringes that you don't quite see. And I think that's what I'm seeing with Jimmy Rollins. And I know you watching a lot of Jimmy Rollins day after day. This is what we're talking about, right? That there's something that speaks to you when you're reflecting on his career that's a little bit better than his numbers are showing. Right. And you said that beautifully, by the way. Thank you, Chase. <laughs> that was very <laughs> eloquent. And well, listen, we've talked a lot about Chase Utley on this show and all our shows because there was an element of greatness that Chase Utley brought to those Phillies teams for five years that were the best teams by far in the National League. But does it happen without Jimmy Rollins as his double play partner? They spent more games playing second and short together than any double play combination in the history of the National League. Uh, and yet, why are people not voting for a guy who has incredible counting numbers? The only shortstop ever, right? With 400 steals, 200 homers, 800 extra base hits, MVP, four gold gloves, most hits in the history of his franchise. Mm. Uh, he's got all the counting numbers. It's about the data. And there's something that data is missing with Jimmy Rollins. I agree. Yeah. You wanted yeah. him at the plate in the yeah. big spot, and yet, if you look at his OPS plus, because he didn't walk, uh, it the OPS plus would make you think this was not a good offensive player when he was actually an impact offensive player. Right. And then right. there's defense. Mm -hmm. the, the metrics make Chase Utley look like a much better defender than Jimmy Rollins. And yet if you watch the two of them play, if you pitch for one of those teams, that's not how it looked to the eyes. Right. I, you know, I've asked pitchers on that team as I've tried to figure out what I was going to do with this ballot. Who did you want the ball hit to in a big spot? Jimmy Rollins or Chase Utley, and their feeling, believe it or not, was unanimously Jimmy Rollins because the, the, somehow the data didn't capture his amazing defensive IQ, his dependability, um, his arm, his, his feel for the game, his ability to know exactly where to be on the field 
at every moment. And the, like, I don't know why that doesn't show up in the data. Yeah, right? except like you know, I put up the numbers there that you know, for a nine-year stretch, he's averaging over 700 plate appearances. I think over 14, 15-year stretch, it's still up around it's, that level. Like around, yes. and here it is for, for that. This is nine years, but 717 plate appearances. I liken <laughs> it to something Joel Sherman said when we were doing our World Series shows, and he said it about Marcus Simeon. That Marcus Simeon. Playing 162 games, he said Bruce Bochy doesn't have to think about who's leading off or who's playing second base for him exactly. all season long. Think of whoever's managing the Phillies for all the, for a decade. You don't have to worry about who's playing shortstop and who's leading off for you for a decade. It's Jimmy Rollins, and he is an impact player. 155 games. His MVP season, he started 162 games at shortstop. I mean, think of the value of that. And there's one other thing, too. Jimmy Rollins was such a positive presence on the, the best team in the league for five years. They averaged eight more wins than any other team in the league. Mm. And I, you know, I had one of his teammates say to me, when Chase Utley walked into the room, everybody sat up straight. But when Jimmy Rollins walked in the room, it made everybody smile. And how much value is there in that? I, there's no metric that measures that. No, true. And uh, Rollins told me, we interviewed him a few months back on MLB Now, and, and he had said, yeah. he goes, look, he goes, I, he goes I, I was ashamed when I didn't play. Like, there was no, <laughs> should I play, should I not play? It was yeah. like, no, I, I felt like I have an obligation to go out and play. And you do that to the detriment of some of your statistics. Or, you know, you're not going to be as good every single day when you're playing all the time. Excellent ballot.